Hi everyone, this is William from the Headphone Experience. I'm here tonight with my first impressions of a set of vacuum tubes and they are the Apos Audio Ray 6SN7 Select Tubes and they do come in this nice little box and I'll give you a view of the tubes in just a minute. They were loaned to me for review by Apos Audio. They currently sell for $149.99 in U.S. dollars and that is for a matched pair. Uh, they're not NOS or new old stock tubes. They are brand new tubes just made. And according to APOS, only about 5% of the tubes that are made actually get selected to be sold in matched pairs. Uh, they have a ceramic base or collar. Uh, they're hand selected and tested. They have gold pins and there are eight pins, which is standard for a 6S N7 tube. They have a three month warranty. Uh, their APOS recommends that you give them a five minute warm up before listening. And they also recommend a burn in time of at least six hours. They say you can go ahead and listen to them that time, but during that six hours, but that it takes at least six hours for them to burn in and reach their full potential. So anyway, I'll give you a look here. They come in this very nice little box here and it flips open and they are packed in a very nice uh, foam surround and well protected. And uh, you can see here that uh, it's just packaged really nice, so I don't think you have to worry about them getting beat up or broken during shipping. So, uh, anyway, I did want to mention that this is the first review I've ever done of tubes. I've done a little bit of tube rolling in the past, not much, but um, I haven't actually done a review of a tube, and APOS asked me if I would do this review. So, I said, sure, why not? And I did happen to have an amp that was compatible with these. So um, first, before I get started, though, I wanted to um, talk about how I feel about reviewing tubes. Because I think the ideal way to review tubes, and if I was a manufacturer of tubes and wanted to compare my tubes to other tubes, or if I was the manufacturer of an amp, and wanted to try different tubes in my amp to see which sounded the best, what I would probably do is I would want to have two identical amps sitting side by side, one with one tube and the other with another tube. Obviously running the same source into both amps and then being able to switch back and forth right away. In fact, two identical headphones would make it perfect where you would have almost no hesitation, but switching headphone plugs from one amp to the other would work also. So, um, but I don't have that. I, the amp I'm using is a $2,000 amp and I do, having two identical amps to compare tubes uh, at that price just isn't possible for me. So I'm going to have to do it with one amp. Well, the problem with that is that gives me about a 15 minute downtime between listening to one tube and the other because you got to give the tubes about probably 10 minutes to cool off enough to remove them from the amp. So I'm listening, I switch off the amp, I got to wait 10 minutes because tubes run at something like 375 degrees and it takes a while to cool down and um, the manufacturer of the amp doesn't recommend removing them until they cool down. So anyway, so I'm looking at 10 minutes of cool down time, switch the tubes, which takes a couple minutes, and then APOS recommends at least a five minute warm up. So now I'm looking at easily 15 minutes, maybe 20 between turning off one tube and going to the next to listen to and it's very hard to do that. It's very hard to remember how something sounds for 15 minutes. I mean a lot of people say that we only have a sound memory of like 10 seconds which means switching headphones is quick enough but 15-20 minutes between tubes 
with one amp, you know, it, it makes it very difficult, a lot more difficult than someone that had two identical amps sitting next to each other. So I'm going to do the best I can, um, you know, counting in for that 15 minutes of downtime in between. So anyway, uh, the amp I am using is the Felix Audio Elise, which uses two of these. So APO sent me a match pair. You can buy them at one at a time because some amps do only use one, uh, 6S and 7, but my amp uses two. Um, my source um, going into the Felix Audio release, I'm using a Cambridge Audio CD transport and that is running a digital signal into the iFi Audio Pro IDSD signature DAC and then into the amp and the headphones that I'm using for this review are my two best headphones that match up with the Elise and the Elise is an OTL type 2 amp so it, it does not match up at all with any planar headphones they just don't sound good or not up to their potential so I'm using a couple of dynamic driver headphones one is the ZMF Atrium which the Atrium is a 300 ohm uh, headphone, dynamic driver, like I said, and then also the JM Audio XTC2 with a 64 ohm beryllium driver. And those are basically, um, those both sound incredible with this or other, I do have some other dynamic uh, driver headphones that do match up with the Elise very well, but I'm gonna use these two for this review. So anyway, um, the stack tubes that come in the Felix Audio Elise, and I'm assuming that they tried a lot of different tubes when they designed this, and this is what they came up with as being the best. And I'm sorry, I do not know how to pronounce the name of the tubes that come stuck in the Elise, but they are spelled P-S-V-A-N-E. So I don't know if the P is silent or... If the PS is silent, I don't know how to pronounce it, so I'm not even going to try. But anyway, that's P-S-V-A-N-E. They're 6SN7 Hi-Fi tubes. And uh, I looked it up, and it looks like those go for around $129 for a match pair. So anyway, I'm um, getting to the sound and the comparison. The first thing I compared was the noise floor. And I found both sets of tubes to be almost identical. Um, with the JM Audio um, <clears throat> XTC2, which is a pretty um, efficient, easy to drive headphone. My normal listening level is about nine o'clock on the volume knob. I tried turning off my source and turned up the volume knob until I did start to hear a little bit of hiss. And I was at about 11 o'clock with both sets of tubes before I started hearing the slightest hiss in a very quiet room and had to get up to about 12 o'clock before it was easy to hear. And it didn't get loud until about 3 o'clock on the volume now. So, um, like I said, the normal listening level with that headphone is only about 9 o'clock, so that's well below the noise floor of the amp because it, it doesn't even begin to show up until after 11 o'clock on the volume knob. So both very quiet, no background noise at all, even with a very sensitive headphone. Uh, they both have a warm, rich sound. They both have excellent clarity and detail. Uh, they both have a wide and deep three-dimensional sound stage, and that's what I love about this amp, um, especially with the ZMF Atrium. It just has this huge three-dimensional sound stage with, a, with tremendous depth, just a lot of sound out in front of me, and that's what I love about matching up an OTL amp with the Atrium, is it just has such a all around you sound stage that just not only has a very good width but incredible depth to it and of all the headphone amp combinations I've tried up to this point and that's you know 40 50 headphones and probably another 20 30 maybe more amps 
the most depth I've heard is the ZMFA Tram with the Felix Audio Elise amp. So anyway, um, and I wanted to also mention that both types of tubes, the um, APOS and the stock tubes, both have very good, I mean, really excellent extension on both ends of the frequency response. They both go very deep into the sub bass. They go, both go as high as I can hear in the treble. And um, I have no complaints about either one. So I'm going to be honest with you here. My bottom line is because of this 15 minute switch over time between tubes, in my first um, my first experiments here, switching back and forth, and I went from the stock tubes to the A-post tubes to back to the stock tubes and back to the A-post tubes, and those two switchovers. Honestly, I'm not hearing a significant noticeable difference. I'm not saying that the difference isn't there. It might be because a lot of times it can take a long time to hear differences. I've, I've compared, say, two different headphone amps or two different decks that initially they sound very similar, but sometimes it takes hours to pinpoint the differences. Sometimes you know there's a difference, but it's hard to put into words. It's hard to explain exactly what the difference is. It's hard to narrow it down. So. Anyway, I'm not saying that they're not different, but in my first experimentation here, I'm not hearing a significant difference or anything that really jumps out at me. So all I can really do here is I'm going to, in the near future, I'm going to spend more time, go back and forth between these two tubes and, you know, listen for a while. Listen to, you know, a few CDs through one tube, then go to the another tube and you know put some time in it and see if I can hear any really significant differences but like I said earlier I'm assuming that the stock tubes were the tubes that um, Felix Audio thought were the best match for this amp while well, these APOS weren't available when this amp was built and this is the Elise Mark II version of this amp and um, so you know, this is a new tube that just came out and, you know, it's maybe um, something Felix Audio wants to also try under their, you know, best conditions with two amps because it does seem to be, um, I don't know if it's an upgrade to the stock tubes or a sideways grade. Like I said, I can't make that decision now. But it definitely doesn't sound like it's a downgrade. It doesn't sound like it's worse than the stock tubes in any way so like i said i'll just have to spend some time with this and see if i can actually pinpoint any significant differences but even if i can't it still seems to be a very good tube and um so anyway i guess i'll wrap this up and get back to you in like a month or so after i put some more time on these tubes plus something else that needs to be considered I, they haven't had their six uh, hours of burning time yet. They've only got maybe a half an hour on them. So it's very possible with burn in, they're going to improve. So I'll make sure they get their proper six hours plus of burn in time and then do some more comparing and see what I come up with. So until then, um, I guess I'll just wrap this up and get back to you on this and it'd probably be a month anyway. I just wanted to let you know I got five new pairs of headphones in this week, so I've got a bunch of new stuff, and we'll have a bunch of first impressions coming out real soon. So, and also that uh, DAC that I mentioned, the iFi uh, Pro IDSD signature, uh, that's I'm planning on that being my next video, my full review of that that's way overdue. And with some of the new equipment I got in, I've, um, I'm realizing how great of deck that is. I really, really like it. So anyway, um, hopefully within the next week, I'll come out with that full review. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, if this video helped you in any way, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, 
please do so and the headphone experience on Facebook continues to grow and is currently at 28.9 thousand members um, and you're all welcome to join us over there a lot of great people a lot of great information about everything to do with headphones so I uh, hope to see you over there and once again thanks for watching my video